Welcome to our Veterans Day Assembly. Um, we're so grateful to all the veterans and people who put in time and effort to make this happen. Um, we'd like to say Happy Veterans Day and we will now have the national anthem sung by Ellie Ware. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched we're so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I say your name. I you solemnly swear. To support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. And to bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. Then I will obey. The orders of. The President of the United States. And the orders of. Those officers, Those officers appointed over me, appointed over me according, to regulations, according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Military justice. So help me God. So help me God. We celebrate Veterans Day on the anniversary of the armistice that ended World War I, the armistice that began on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. The timing of this holiday is quite deliberate in terms of historical fact, but somehow it always seems quite fitting to me that this day comes deep in autumn when the colors are muted and the days seem to invite contemplation. It is, in a way, an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us, in wars far away. The imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise, but most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. And all we can do is remember. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. In memory of those who gave the last full measure of devotion 
May our efforts to achieve lasting peace gain strength. Let us make a vow to our dead. Let us show them by our actions that we understand what they died for. Strengthened by their courage, heartened by their value, and born by their memory, let us continue to stand for the ideals for which they lived and died. In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I do not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it. We shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty. My name is Michael Wayne Henry. I am 50 years old in uh, hometown of San Antonio, Texas. Wow, what branch did you serve in? United States Marine Corps. How long did you serve for? Six years. I was active duty. I was very active uh, uh, all over the Pacific Theater from Iraq, uh, Philippines, Persian Gulf, Africa. I was all over the place. In the Marine Corps, honor, courage, and commitment is driven into you, and that's probably um, that's probably the thing that has stayed with me the most. Because everything, uh, it doesn't just you know, it's driven so far inside you that it <clears throat> it's how you live your life day to day. Every day, I think about that honor, courage, commitment. You know, there's a commercial that says uh, the change is forever, and it, that's what it means. It the things you learn, the lessons you learn, they stay with you for life. What's the biggest thing that you utilize to this day? Oh, work ethic. Oh, work ethic. Because you're in the Marine Corps, I mean, there's times where you're, you could go days without sleep or, you know, even in, uh, you know, there are 16, 20 hour days, you know, going with, uh, you know, living off one meal a day or two meals a day for a long period of time. I mean, you know, it's, uh, work ethic it it teaches you to always give 110 percent there's no days off one of the things that i think has shaped my life the most is um once you've been shot at once somebody has tried to kill you you know life in the world you know like the everyday problems that people complain about or you know get upset about Man, they're just not that big of a deal, you know. It, it's, uh, I think, gratitude. Gratitude. Uh, uh, very thankful, because I think once you see how other worlds or other countries uh, operate and what life is like outside America, I think it gives you a great appreciation for America, for what we have. I'm talking like basic things like paved roads, running water. Uh, being able to use the restroom indoors and not outdoors and, you know, uh, going into a grocery store like Harmon's that has light and electricity. Imagine going in an electricity, uh, a grocery store where the, the meat is not refrigerated. It might be on ice. There's no lights, you know, uh, dirt roads everywhere. I mean, you know. Once you go outside the country, you really appreciate 
what we have. And not just that, I'm not, not even that, but you know, if you want to talk about freedom, you know, America is supposed to be about freedom. Once you see somebody stoned to death for their beliefs, you know, walking, uh, um, uh, do you have a, any sisters? Yeah, I do. Sister. Imagine your sister being stoned to death for walking unaccompanied without a man through town or, or uh, being whipped for trying to choose her own religion. And you think about that and then you really start to realize what it is to have freedom. And I believe it's something that we take for granted. What's the, uh, what's the experience that you view as like the most positive? Oh my gosh. I have helped, I have had the opportunity to serve and help so many people around the world. People who are really, um, not just, you know, uh, you know, there have been times where we have gone in and, you know, saved people from typhoons or volcanoes, but even more than that, some of the wars that we fought or the places I've been, people are so thankful to see us come and, and help them and stand up to the people who are, you know, keeping them down. So that act of service, that uh, it's a real honor for anyone who served their country, you know, in a uniform and given back. You just can't say enough about that sacrifice. What was the uh, what was the experience that shaped you the most? Probably uh, watching my best friend die. Watching my best friend die right next to me and then escorting his body home to Michigan, you know, under that flag-covered coffin. You really appreciate what that flag means and what America means. And, you know, if you ever heard the saying, uh, you know, the price of freedom is paid for blood, paid by blood, that's what that means. And many people, going back hundreds of years have not just given their time and their, you know, but there are people, men and women who have given their life for what we have. I think some people forget that or don't appreciate it, it seems like, you know, to be able to choose which way you want to go in life and how you want to live your life and where you want to live and, you know, uh, you know, the pursuit of happiness, you know, happiness is not guaranteed. It's just the pursuit that's guaranteed by the Constitution. You still got to gut it out and grind it out and work your butt off every day, you know. You're guaranteed the pursuit. You're not guaranteed happiness. You got to go out and make it. So that's what freedom means to me. My name is Sam Curry. I'm uh, 42 years old and my hometown is San Francisco, California. I am currently active duty Navy. I've been in the Navy for 23 years and by the end of it will be 23 years, four days exactly. And looking forward to the next chapter. So funny thing, I did serve here for three years in the early 2000s. I was a Navy recruiter, uh, but I've also served in San Diego, California for roughly 12 years of my service three years in Rota, Spain, going, going all over the Mediterranean, and then most recently was in uh, Southern California, and now I'm here. So I worked my way from the enlisted ranks. I was a, an electronics technician working on a weapon system computers. I worked my way up uh, to more of a management position, uh, obtained a commission, became a naval officer, and since then I've been a maintenance manager, uh, leading sailors, and uh, making my commands better. What was your uh, what was your most positive experience when you were serving? To me, honestly, it was the it was meeting my wife. <laughs> she's uh, right back here. She's <laughs> right back there. Uh, the the other answer is uh, leading and mentoring sailors, hel helping them to uh, grow and progress in their careers and seeing them be successful. That, that's honestly the most um, important achievement I had. We have to ask, how'd you meet your wife? Um, we were we were on we were on the same ship together. Uh, we began we became best friends, and then things went from there. What did the uh, armed forces teach you that you still utilize to this day? A lot. Uh, discipline. 
Um, a great skill working with electronics, uh, management, leadership skills. I apply them every day. Uh, what experiences or experience or experiences have shaped you most in the person you are today? Meeting my wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I, again, I've, I said it, it's the the chance to lead and, and help develop sailors from from when they first show up, not knowing how to do any any part of their job and helping them to grow into the, the next leader it's 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 helping to, to groom and, and, and grow the next generation of leaders Dean Shakespeare and I'm uh, 76 and I was raised in Tropic Utah down by Bryce Canyon um, where did uh, what branch did you serve in for how long the army for three years was it uh, active duty or reserves or a combination? Active duty. That was, uh, that was back in the Vietnam area where, you know, uh, they were drafting all kinds of people and uh, chose to enlist. And that way I could determine where I served. So, no, I did not serve in Vietnam. I'm still alive, I guess. <laughs> no, I, I served in Germany. We were in the uh, Pershing Missile Battalion, and uh, <clears throat> the Pershing missiles were a nuclear missile, and uh, they're mobile. And so uh, they are just introduced into uh, to Germany to uh, kind of keep Russia at bay, and so that's... Uh, that's what we did. It was mobile, so we basically went on uh, maneuvers. We'd go out into the forests and here and there and set up and pretend that we were shooting, and luckily we never did. So, or else we'd have a war. <laughs> so, so, that's kind of the way it was. Well, <clears throat> I think if you ever serve in the Army, you'll, the, the, the statement is that you always hurry up and wait, and so I spent a lot of time waiting, and that's, that's, that's typical. Uh, I guess the, the, uh, the main thing you, I, I learned is that uh, even though the jobs can sometimes be distasteful, that uh, it depends on how you approach them, because you can usually find something that's in, enjoyable or entertaining in almost any situation. And then there's always the people and the association with the people that uh, can make life a little easier and go better. I, I guess uh, you know, knowing that you can you can get through most any any situation, it was uh, uh, great because you know Europe is really quite small compared with the, the U.S. And so we uh, on weekends you could go over to. Denmark or, you know, you go down to Italy and Rome, you know, Paris or France. And so we, we traveled a lot just in short periods, which was, uh, you know, something that uh, was very enjoyable. And of course, I had my wife there, <clears throat> which was another reason that I chose the branch that I, uh, that I did, the service that I did, is because uh, you could take your wife with you. And so that was uh, a major and enjoyable part of it. Well, <clears throat> you know, we, we enjoy a lot of freedoms here in the U.S. And, you know, they come at a price. Somebody's got to pay that price. And I felt obligated to, you know, do my, my part in paying the price for the, uh, the freedoms we enjoy. And so even though it's uh, sometimes distasteful, of course, during the Vietnam War, the, the people that served were not respected, or, uh, and uh, there were a lot of people that even left the country to avoid draft, but I felt, you know, obligated in, in a way uh, to, to serve, and so that's, that's basically why I did. <clears throat> you know, it's, 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 it's everything to, to be able to, to uh, do the things we do, to you know, own property to to speak our our voices the way the way we want and 
and to, to worship the way we want. And uh, so I think that that's, uh, and to know that we live in a society that, uh, society of laws <clears throat> and rules. And uh, so in defending those, uh, those rules, uh, My name is uh, Jim Phillips. My hometown's been almost everywhere. <laughs> I started out in Lehigh. I was born in Lehigh. But uh, my father was in the service through World War II and after, and so we moved all over. When you I were... served in the Air Force. How, uh, how long did you serve for? 30 years. Well, I went to pilot training in Laughlin Air Force Base. That's in Texas. and. Uh, uh, I, I've been in uh, Del Rio, Texas, been in Washington, D.C., California, Travis Air Force Base, Was uh, went to Vietnam. We were stationed at a, at a Thailand Air, Air Force Base, Air Base, but uh, we always flew into the east. Like I say, I went to pilot training in Del Rio, Texas. And uh, that's, a, that's a year, that takes a year. There's, you have to fly to two different type of training aircraft. Uh, and then from there I went to uh, Travis Air Force Base, California. From there, I, that was where I, was, Vietnam started and we flew into there all the time. And uh, they finally moved me over to, to get a little closer to the action at, uh, in the Philippines. And we lived there, I was able to have my family with me there. And we lived there for four years. And I went in and out of the country quite often. And, and it was always going over to Nam. What did your uh, what were some important important lessons that your service taught you? I would say uh, mainly to uh, take responsibility and and do your job. Well, I grew up as an army brat, and uh, I I like the military, and uh, I like the Air Force best of all, and uh, I like to fly airplanes. They have what they call a career broadening experience, and that's uh, where you learn to fly a lot of different ones. I started out with a, uh, what we call a T Bird. That's the old T 33, which was the old F 80. And uh, then they, it, you're there, it, you learn that aircraft for six months with all the and they, of course you're graded, and then you're upgraded if you make it to a, to a T-37. We call that a Tweety Bird. It's actually a, a two-engine jet trainer, and uh, would be a nice airplane to have for your own self. <laughs> I was t teamed up with guys that uh, your life and his life depended on each other. And I think that was a, quite a lesson to me. You learn to really trust, learn those you can trust and then really trust them. And they trust you. It, it helped me in relationship with my kids and uh, with my wife, learning to trust people. Flying fighters, you always have a, a buddy that's in another aircraft flying right by you. And so you, uh, you learn to look out after each other. And uh, you, tr you learn a lot of trust. What does your freedom mean to you? Freedom? That's the most precious thing we have. And we never want to give it up. Uh, 
I think Americans would be very hard pressed if they lost their freedom. They, they wouldn't know because we do have, a, if any other country I've seen and seen a lot of them, we have the freest society of anybody. And uh, most societies, there's always somebody watching you and reporting on you, and we don't do that here. Well, is there, is there anything else that we haven't asked you? Uh, my name is uh, Tom Shipkin. I'm 72 years old, and my hometown is Salt Lake City. Um, I started in the Army. Uh, I, was on a, I was on a church mission, and while I was on my mission, my draft number, they had a lottery, was 69. And when I got home, they were on about 150, so it was pretty automatic. Uh, I got married uh, to my lovely wife in August, and by October, I was in basic training at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri as a uh, combat engineer. And uh, after, after basic, you go to AIT. I don't even remember what that stands for. Advanced, Advanced something. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> Advanced Info uh, Training. And while I was, uh, when I was in AIT, uh, I had an accident and uh, tore up my knee. And so they took me out of combat engineers and they were going to put me in as a, a clerk. And so it took me about a week to get through that clerk course. And, uh, and then I just kind of sat around for several months in uh, Fort Leonard Wood, not knowing what, where I was going, what they were going to do with me. And I think they kind of forgot about me for a while. So I spent quite a bit of time just doing nothing. Uh, reading a lot of novels, and then finally I was, uh, what what happened is after about a year and a half as a combat engineer, uh, I was able to get into the Air National Guard, the Utah Air National Guard. I put my name in on that while I was in high school, and my commander uh, at, uh, in the Army was able to get me into the Air National Guard. So I went from the Army to the Air Force. And uh, uh, I, that was kind of the main thing I did. You know, we built bridges uh, uh, when I was in the Army. Uh, I was trained as a clerk and they put me in as demolition expert. That I had no training on, but uh, after a while you kind of figure it out with a few mistakes and things. But uh, we blew up a few things we weren't supposed to. But it was it was fun. We had a good time. Um, what did the armed forces teach you that you still utilize to this day? Uh, probably the main thing is discipline. Uh, that's the first thing that uh, even in basic, there's a lot of discipline. Uh, you know, you just can't get out of line, or or you pay for that. Uh, I, you know, the other thing that I learned was. Uh, just getting along with people, you know, you have to work together as a group, and uh, you need a lot of nice people, good friends. Um, what was your most positive experience? Uh, boy, that's, you know, there isn't one particular thing. Uh, you know, I, I had an experience when I was on CQ, uh, which is a, God, you know what CQ stands for? Remember what that was? You spend the night in that in a guard shack with uh, somebody that's superior to you. In fact, it was my drill sergeant. And, and I just remember I didn't want to do the CQ, but uh, I was filling in for somebody else. And, you know, he, he made me. He made me uh, stay with him all night long. And uh, his standards were much different than mine. And uh, he, he wanted me to drink coffee to stay awake. And I told him I don't do that. And every time he'd start smoking in the guard shack, I would go outside. And he would start to tell an a off-color joke. And so I'd go out before he finished it. And, and that went on all night long. And uh, finally, at about 5 in the morning or so, 
he, he said, he said, Shifkin, you, you passed the test. And I said, what do, what do you mean? He said, uh, he says, I'm, I'm from Ogden, Utah. His name was Drill Sergeant Love, and he had, was anything but had love in his heart. But he, uh, uh, it turned out he was kind of a Jack Mormon. But he said, I just wanted to see how far I could go with you. And uh, so, you know, that was a, a positive thing for me. You know, keep your standards and do what you should. And, uh, sometimes it pays off. And, he, and then we became great friends. <laughs> I mean, I could do no wrong after that. You know, you, you do. Uh, I, I wanted to be a pilot. And uh, I, by the time uh, the draft came around, I didn't, I, there was no way I could get into the Air Force. And uh, I, I just didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. But sometimes in the Army, you, you do so many different things. Uh, it ended up that uh, I never completed my Air National Guard. I did that for four years after the Army. But uh, I was accepted in med school, so we moved to Chicago. And uh, we, uh, and so they let me just be on inactive reserve. But I think, you know, they just, uh, in the Army, you, uh, the discipline and the training and all those things, it kind of like scouting for kids, you know, and, and getting your merit badges. Same thing kind of happens in the Army. Well, uh, like some of the other guys have said, you know, freedom's everything. And right now, sometimes we feel like we're losing some of that freedom. And uh, it's scary. It's, it's really scary. And uh, to me, the most important thing is, is freedom in this country. And we want to keep that. Thank you all for watching this. Um, we'd like to thank our veterans again and wish you all happy Veterans Day. Um, and just as a side note, all jobs are starting this week, so come out and start raising money for charity.